let and draw the letter G animal this week, a gentle giraffe. You're going to want to get three items, same items we use every week, a pencil, an eraser, which can be the eraser on the end of your pencil, and a piece of paper. So for my drawing, I just use copy paper, the kind of paper that comes out of the printer. But if you have something nicer, you can use that as well. Now, before you leave, I want to ask you one thing. Are you subscribing to my channel? If you haven't done that yet, pause the video, go down and click the subscribe button. That way you are getting all of these videos. Plus you can tell your friends and hopefully they will come and join along with you to do these drawings. All right, pause the video and look for those three items that I asked you to get, a pencil, an eraser, and a piece of paper. And as you're looking around your house, you might also want to look for something to color with. I'm going to be working with some colored pencils. That's the what I want to work with for today. But you can use crayons or markers. So look for a pencil, an eraser, and something to outline with, maybe a black colored pencil or a marker and then something to color with. Meet me back here and we will begin. All right, welcome back. I'm so excited to do our gentle giraffe today. That was the animal that you chose out of all the animals that I gave you choices for, for the letter G. So let's begin. So the first thing I always do before I start a drawing is I look at the drawing and I break it up into shapes. So when I'm looking at this giraffe's face, the first thing I notice when I'm looking at his head is he's got a round oval shaped head right here. It looks like an oval kind of on its side. You see that? And then right here, his muzzle is more of an oval shape that's kind of going tall up and down. That's important when we're drawing his head. His neck is going to be a rectangle. That's pretty easy. And his ears look like two leaves. So let's begin by first finding the center of our paper i'm going to be using my black marker but i'm going to be referring to this as my pencil today because you're working with pencil i don't want you drawing with a marker you should always start with a pencil drawing very lightly and then it'll be easier for you to erase so the first thing we do is we find the center of our paper and we make a little dot with our pencil so make a dot with your pencil in the middle of your paper all right, that dot helps us find the center and it helps our drawing to be even and not tilting off too far to one side or the other. All right, now the first thing I'm noticing when I'm looking at my giraffe is that from the center of the paper here, that's where the oval of his muzzle is going to go. So I'm going to start right where that dot is and I'm going to draw a kind of a rounded circular oval like this. And then I'm going to draw a larger oval above it going the opposite direction. Now, but before we do that, I want to see if you're having trouble drawing your circles and ovals. If you're drawing really hard and it's hard for you to erase, then I want to show you again. I showed it to you in the last uh, lesson, but I want to just remind you again how to draw your circles so that your lines are a little lighter. So instead of just like setting your pencil down and drawing really hard, Move your hand in the direction of what you want to draw. So I'm kind of hovering my hand over the paper like this, and then I'm lightly going to touch down. So I'm moving my hand like this, and then I'm going to lightly touch down and keep moving my hand. And that's going to give you a little softer line than if you just set your pencil down and drew a really hard circle or oval. Now up here at the top, when I look at his head, this shape oval is going to go the other direction. I'm going to do it this way. And we want to make sure that that is also um, larger than this. So I want to make sure that this shape is going to be a little larger. So right above this, I'm going to go above, hovering my hand around and making my oval going this direction, not tall. Now, some of you might draw really tiny, and I want to make sure that you're drawing large enough. We've got a whole big piece of paper here. So before we move on, I want you to check your work. Are you drawing a little bit too small for that big piece of paper? If you are, pause the video and erase your lines and draw it a little larger. Or we just began. Might as well just flip the paper over to the other side and start again. So I want you to double check your work before we move on. I want you to work big enough that you're going to be able to color it later. So sometimes when we work small, it's really hard to color. So check your work before we move on. Always pause the video anytime I'm going too fast. Now let's continue our drawing. 
All right, so once we've drawn our oval, we're going to connect our two ovals for the side of the space right here and here. So I'm just going to take this pencil and I'm going to make a little connection here on an angle and a little connection on this side. Okay, once we've connected those two together, then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to make sure that this comes to a little bit more of a narrow curve, kind of almost like, let me show you. It's not a super round curve. It comes down to a little bit of a, not a point, but it's a little bit more pointed at the bottom. Now, once I've done that, I can go in and erase these in a little bit. I'm going to keep drawing a few more items. And then once I do that, we'll go back and erase everything in the middle. I'm going to go up to the top of the giraffe's head, and I'm going to draw the letter V right here. It's going to kind of look like I'm giving him antennas. Actually, what we're going to be drawing are the horns on top of his head. Now, these horns right here are covered in fur. They're just a bony tissue up there, and they're called an ossicone. The male giraffe use those when they're young. That's how they fight. So for those ossicones, what we're going to do is after we've drawn that V, we're going to add another line next to it. So I'm going to go over here and draw another line that comes down to the head. And I want it to be a little bit wider at the bottom, a little bit more narrow up at the top. I'm going to round it very lightly at the top because later we're going to add fur to it. So for now, just round it up at the top. Now, right about now, we're going to start to figure out where we want to place his ears. So his ears are the shape of a leaf. They're a little bit more narrow at the base and a little bit more pointed at the end and a little wider in the middle. So we're going to be drawing a curved line that comes out to the tip and rounds back again. So I'm going to start right here next to his ossicone. I'm going to make a little line where I want to start his ear. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm curving his ear out and then looping it around and bringing it back. Now, before we move on to the other, let's check our work. Did you make your ear narrow and pointed at one end and a little bit more narrow or skinny at this side? We want to make sure that there, it's a little wider here. That's going to give it more of that leaf shape. Now, once I've done one ear, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to curve it up and around. I'm going to turn it around or pointed on the end, not too sharp of a point, but a little point on the end. I'm going to bring it out and then back in again. This is the time for us to check our work. So once we've drawn our two ears, we want to make sure they're about the same size. We also can check our ossicones the same way by just measuring with your fingers. So my ossicones are about three fingers tall. So you want to check your work. Yours could be two fingers tall. It doesn't matter. It's just as long as they're the same. And then we want to check our ears. So the ears are a little bit, let's see, a little bit about the same length as your ossicones. So my ossicones up here are four fingers tall. That means my ears should be about four fingers long. It appears that this ear is a little longer on this side. So I'm going to make it a little smaller. I'm going to check my work. That's a little better. Remember, pause your video anytime you need to erase. Now we're going to add the in part, inside part of the ear. There's a little flap right here that's covered with a little fur, which we'll add later. We're going to fold in that little flap of the ear right now. I'm going to start right here in the middle of his ear and make a dot. And what I'm going to be doing is curving this line up toward the top. And then I'm going to stop it right before I get to the edge. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to curve it out up and over. Now you might notice that I drew fur. We can add that later. 
But for now, I want to make sure that your ears look like my ears, that you have even spaces. They're a little wider here and a little bit more narrow at the tip. If you have done that and they look pretty much the same size, we're ready to move on. Now the next part we're gonna draw is the neck. So we're gonna continue a line that comes right here from underneath his chin and it's gonna come down toward the bottom of our paper, not the corner, but more toward the bottom. So from here, right underneath his chin, I'm gonna bring a line that comes down and toward the bottom of the paper. Now I'm going to go up here to the side of his head and I'm going to draw another line. This is going to be the top of his neck and this one's going to go toward the edge of the paper. So I'm going to start here and I'm just going to go all the way down toward the bottom edge of the paper. You notice I didn't go to the bottom corner. I just went kind of over here. You want the neck to be a little bit more skinny here and a little bit wider as it goes down. All right, now the next part that we're going to draw is in here, the middle of his head and his face. We're gonna work on his nose and his eyes. So right here where we have that dot, we're gonna erase that dot in the middle of the paper. We don't need that anymore. And we're gonna go in here and erase this area. We don't need that anymore. So go ahead and get your eraser and we're gonna clean up all that middle. Okay, moving on to his nostrils. We're gonna come down here to the bottom and right in the center of this lower area, we're gonna draw the letter V, but we're not gonna connect it at the middle. I'm gonna leave a little space right there. Do you see how I did that? This is gonna be his nostrils. So you wanna leave a little space in between. Now my space in between my nostrils was about a finger, but you can make yours a little bit wider or more narrow, it's up to you. So I'm making kind of like the letter V. So what we're gonna be doing is making the nostrils, and the nostrils to me kind of look like a watermelon seed. So I'm going to start here at the bottom, I'm gonna loop it around and bring it back. You see how it makes kind of like a teardrop shape? To do it on this side, looping it around and bringing it back. So there's the nostrils. We'll color those in later. And then we're going to draw a rainbow curve right above those nostrils. So that is this little part of the flap of his nostril. It actually rises up above his skin. Can you see that? Okay. Now, once we've done that, it's time for us to build the bridge of his nose. So I'm gonna be drawing a very light line. I want you to try to draw this line as light as you can, right down the middle. That line is gonna be a guide to help us draw his bridge of his nose. So draw a very light line. It doesn't need to be dark, just very light right here. And that's gonna help us do the placement of the bridge of his nose so it's even right in the middle. So I'm gonna go about a finger space away on each side of that line. So I'm gonna go about a finger space away and make a little dot, and about a finger space away on this side and make a dot. That way I know that when I make this bridge, it's gonna be even. So I'm gonna draw a line that crosses over that dot. It curves around the nostrils and connects to the side of his face here. See how I did that? Then I'm gonna jump over here to this dot. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna draw a line that comes down, touches that dot, curves around the nostril, and touches the side of his face on this side. Now, once we have done that, these two edges should be pretty much evenly spaced. And that's why we put that line in the middle. There's not gonna be a big change between one side and the other. That's gonna help us with the placement of the eyes that we're gonna do in a little while. 
Okay, so once we have that, we're just gonna curve this up and over a little bit and up and over on this side to get ready to draw his eyes. Now his eyes are gonna be placed right here. And we wanna make sure that his eyes are large. In a giraffe's face, the eyes are about the size of a golf ball. So right over here on the side, we're gonna draw a large circle. And we wanna make sure that that circle is coming a tiny bit off the edge of the face. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, a large circle. And we wanna make sure that those circles are even. Now, usually when I draw, I've gotta erase it about two or three times to get it right. So let's check my work. Uh-oh. Can you see that? Do you see how this eye is taller or higher than this eye? Now let's check my work here. Oops, you can also see that this eye is higher than this eye. So I need to erase that eye and correct it. So all you need to do, and you're gonna check your work, so just pause the video and check your work. This part's really important, so make sure your eyes are even. So I'm gonna erase mine, and if yours aren't even, I want you to take a minute to erase yours. I'm gonna go back in and try again. All right, now I'm gonna check my work again. That's a little bit better. I think that needs to be a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna shorten it up on this side. Oh, that's a lot better. Okay, I think I got it down this time. So once you have your two circles, and by the way, they don't have to be perfectly round. We're gonna be changing it in just a minute anyway. But once you have your circles, that's gonna help you now finish off the eyes. So the first part that we need to notice about his beautiful eyes is so check out his eyelashes. They are so long. So a giraffe has those beautiful long eyelashes. His eyes need to be pr protected from the sand because he lives in the African savanna and it's very sandy and dry there. So those long eyelashes protect his eyes from the wind and the sand. So now what we're going to be doing is giving him an eyelid first. So I'm going to start right here in the middle of where that little circle is. I'm going to make a little dot right here where I want his eyelid to be. And I'm going to make a little dot in the center of this one. And I'm going to start to draw his eyelids. This eyelid is going to go up and it's going to cut a little bit off the top of that circle. So I'm going to cut it off and come around. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. It's going to go up. And it's going to chop a little bit off the top of that circle. See how I did that? Okay, now once we do that, we wanna make sure that we also reconnect the bottom of his eyes. I'm just gonna darken that corner and make it line up with the bottom of his eye. And then right here in the center of that big eye, I want you to draw a large circle. This is gonna be the white highlight in his eye. And then we're gonna take our pencil and very softly color around that circle. Later, we can use our crayon or our color pencil and color it in a little darker. But for now, we're just gonna very lightly take our pencil and brush it. Now, once we've done that, we're gonna add his eyelashes. I wanna show you how I drew his eyelashes. Look at how long his top eyelashes are compared to his bottom eyelashes. And that's because if you look, look at how long his eyelashes are. You can kind of see his bottom lashes, but his top ones are very long. So we're gonna exaggerate his top eyelashes and they're gonna swoop down. So they're gonna swoop a little bit low and off the side of his head. Now the bottom eyelashes are going to be a little shorter And once we've added those eyelashes, then we're gonna give him a little bit of a curve to the bottom of his face, right underneath, right here. There's a little bone where his cheekbone is. It's right underneath his eye. So we're gonna add that curve right now. 
right here, right underneath this eye, we're going to add a little curve. And we're going to do the same thing on this side, add a little curve. And then we're going to do the same thing up here at the top of his head. We're going to add a slight curve here and a little bit of a curve there. So you can see he's got a lot of wrinkles around his eyes. You see all those wrinkles? We're not going to add all of those wrinkles, but we'll add a little bit in there. All right, let's fix the top of his head now. So we're going to come up here to the top of his head. And we're going to give him a little bit of shading right here. So taking your pencil, we're going to be shading up and down very lightly with your pencil right here, right in between his eyes. Now, I don't want you to do this really dark. You're just going to do it very softly with your pencil. So let me find my pencil sketch so I can show you. So I just brush my pencil really softly right there. Now, once you brush it really lightly in that one area, you're going to take your pencil and brush it very softly in the middle of his muzzle. And this is going to be a little bit lighter than right there. See how I did that? Very soft. And then we're going to go up here to the top, and we're going to give him a little fur on the top of his head. So I want you to uh, lightly erase the top of his head, and we're going to fuzzy up the top of his head a little bit. So I just want you to give him some short little hairs right along the top of his head. And then I told you earlier that his ossicones are actually covered with fur. So let me show you that photograph again. So take your pencil, and right up here at the top, I want you just to add a few long strands of hair going around the edge. You see how I'm kind of brushing them out, kind of flicking my pencil out, out, out. So the top of his ossicones have the longer portions of the hair. The sides have shorter hair. I'm going to also continue adding a little bit of hair underneath. Right here, it's almost forming a circle. Now the sides are going to be a little bit shorter hair. So I'm just going to kind of very lightly brush with my pencil down the edge. Okay. Now, let's add a little bit of hair here on this wider flap of his ear. I'm going to erase it, and then I'm just going to brush a little bit of hair here. And then I'm going to erase this part. And just take your pencil and kind of sweep it out, out, out. So now he's got a little bit of fur right there the inner corner of his ear. And if you look here, you can see that hair right in the corners of his ears. Okay, next we're gonna move on to adding the fur down his neck. Okay, I haven't told you too many facts yet because I really wanna get the drawing part done. Once we get to the spots, then I'm gonna give you a bunch of facts. So let me talk to you about his neck though, because his neck is a pretty cool fact. First off, his neck is as tall the average giraffe's neck is as tall as me. I am five foot three, and that's the average height of their neck, about five feet to five and a half feet. So when you are drawing right here on the base of his neck, he also has a whole band of short cropped fur that goes all the way down his neck. It almost looks like somebody went in with scissors and trimmed it perfect, doesn't it? So I'm going to take my pencil right above this neckline, and I'm just going to zigzag it all the way down like this. Now, once we get that done, we're going to go back in, and we're going to brush 
from this neck, we're going to brush some lines going up. It's like we're going to be drawing kind of blades of grass. We're just going to flick our pencil up, 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 up. like you were drawing grass. All right, so now we've got the hair on the back of his neck. Next, we're gonna go in and add his cool patterns of patches that are on his coat. So these patches are really unique. Every giraffe has a different set of patches. And it's kind of like our fingerprints. They're unique to each giraffe. So when you're making your patch, you just wanna make a wibbly wobbly line around the edge, and then you're gonna do a few along this edge as well. Now, once you've done a couple on the edges, you're gonna draw a few random patches that are smaller in between. Now, for shading, we're gonna take our pencil just like we shaded up here. And we're gonna shade, remember, very lightly because we're gonna go over it later with color. So very lightly, just take your pencil and lightly shade those patches. This will be a reminder later when we get to our colored pencil or our marker or our crayon to color these darker. So the males have, um, more patches than the females, and the adults actually have darker patches. So their patches get darker as they grow older. So those are some cool facts I learned. I'm gonna put a little shading inside of his nostril here. And I'm gonna add a little shading inside of his ear here. You notice when I'm shading, I'm taking my pencil and only going one direction. I've talked to you about that before. So now I'm going to shade the inside of this ear just very lightly, very softly brushing it across. And I'm going to go up here to his ossicone and I'm going to shade it very softly on one side. So I'm shading it on the right side. I'm going to shade this one also on the right side. And I'm going to shade it all the way across at the bottom, right there next to his head. I know this is pretty amazing, but we are actually already done drawing our giraffe. I think he turned out so cute. Now, there's a lot more detail that you can go into, but this is kind of our basic giraffe, and I think he turned out really adorable. But I want to talk to you now about some more things that you can do to make your giraffe picture really come alive. The first thing is that when you're first drawing your giraffe, he's going to be done like this. He's just kind of black and white. There's not a lot of detail. We've gone in just with our pencil outline. And then you can go in next and add a little bit more shading. So I talked to you about this the way I do this um, the last time, but I wanna remind you how I do this. When I draw my very first drawing, where's my first one? This is my practice. This is the very first one I did. I take my paper and then I stick it on this window. See that window behind me? I just stand there and I place my paper on the window. I place another clean piece of paper in front of it and I trace over my line. So that's how I end up with two drawings that look exactly the same. So I paste my paper on the window. I put a clean piece of paper in front of it. I retrace it again. So I've got paper number two that looks almost exactly like paper number one. Then for my second paper, I decided to change it by making it a little bit more detailed. So look at the difference between my first one and my second one. So my first one is just an outline, very simple. Now the second one, look at the difference. I added a few patches on his face. I added a few dark lines by shading with my black colored pencil. Remember I told you I do everything with pencil? I'm just using my Crayola colored pencil. I don't use anything fancy, no fancy art tools here. 
And so you can see the ears I shaded. I just talked to you about that, how to do that. We could add some patches to his face, as a matter of fact. So you might want to go in here and add some very small patches with your pencil. I would not make these very large on his face. You want these very soft and small. But you could add some patches there. They also have patches on their head. If you wanted to add a few patches on their forehead, you can. Yeah, I'm just kind of making some random shapes. They're not like a perfect circle. All right, so once you go in with your black colored pencil or crayon, I'm using a black colored pencil. See, I, then I shaded a little darker right here along his neck. See how I put that shadow right underneath his chin? And I darkened my outline a little harder around his face. Then I added a little shading right here between his nostrils. So right here, I went in with my black colored pencil and I added a little shading right there. I made it a little bit darker. You see that? I also added a little bit more darker shading inside of his ear compared to his hair and a little bit more shading right here behind his neck. So here, underneath his face, I shaded it. And then I shaded the bottom of his neck. So I went right here and I shaded so hard with this marker because these don't work as well as what you're using, but I shaded it here. And then I want to show you my color version. Okay, so once I was finished with my black and white version, then I tried it one more time. Same thing as before, but this time I added colored pencil to it. So let me talk to you about my colors. Move my projector like that, that's a little better. Okay, I wanna to talk to you about my colors. I have this trick when I'm working with colored pencils. So they come in a box, right? Well, this is what happens. The colors that I use the most get short compared to my other ones that I don't use as much. Look at my black compared to my orange. Half the time I can't find it in my box, right? Does this happen to you? So then you shake them out and you put them on the table and they roll off the table. So what I do is I use a coffee mug or a jar, something like this. And I set it next to my box of colored pencils. And every time I use a color that I'm gonna keep using, it goes in my jar. So the first thing that I colored, I started with the lightest color and that was kind of an off-white, like a cream color. So that was this color. So that went in my jar. Then my next color I went into, I wanted to make it have a little bit of golden yellow in there. I noticed some yellow. So that color went in my jar. Then I started in with some orange. You can see the orange. Then I went in with some tans and browns. And my final color was black. I used black to darken his nostrils and I used black in his eyes to darken his eyes. I used black a little heavier inside his ear, and right there, do you see how I darkened it right around that curve of his ear? I used a little bit of dark brown and black here to shade the sides of his ossicone. Now check out his spots. See how I did his spots? All I used was orange and yellow, and brown, where's my brown? Those colors right here to make his spots kind of colorful. So I hope this is helping you as I'm teaching you all these little tricks. I don't know whether there's too much information, whether you're like, oh my gosh, I wish you would stop talking. But I just wish somebody would have done this with me when I was going to art school. I wish somebody would have taken the time to explain these little tricks to me. I just never got this kind of help. And I just think it's really helpful to find some different facts and some cool tricks each time we come to our art lessons. So a couple things that I want to tell you before you go, and that is this beautiful animal is the tallest animal in the entire world. And 
the male is so big, he is 18 feet tall. So most men are around six feet tall. So that would be like three men standing on top of each other. That's how tall a giraffe is, a male giraffe. A female giraffe is about 14 feet tall. Another thing that I thought was really cool is their tongue. Do you know their tongue is blue? It's blue. It's a dark, dark blue. And the reason they think their tongues are blue is that they protect, the, the color of their tongue protects them against sunburn. And the reason that is important is that their tongues are so long. They're about two, uh, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, two feet long. That's crazy pants. You want to know why their tongue is so long? Because they survive on eating the uh, plant. The acacia tree has a leaf. And in order for them to get to the acacia tree, which is a very tall tree, they have to use their long tongue because there are these big, sharp thorns in the acacia tree, and they can't just bite down. They actually have to use their tongue to maneuver in between those thorns to grab those leaves. Their tongue is very similar to our chameleon that we learned earlier. It, it, their tongue is a prehensile tongue. That means it can curl up like this, just like the... Uh, chameleon's tail can. So they literally can take their tongue, curl it, and wrap it around a leaf and then pull it into their mouth and eat it. Another cool fact is that they don't drink very much water. They only need to drink every few days. I thought that was interesting. They're able to, and speaking of drinking, oh my goodness, listen to this. So their front legs are longer than their back legs. So their front legs are about five feet long. I am five foot three, so their legs are almost as long as me, but their back legs are shorter, which is kind of funny, and their neck is super long, right? Remember I told you their neck was, oh, their neck is between five to seven feet long, so because they're so tall and their legs are longer in the front, they're kind of lopsided, and they can't bend their neck down to get a drink of water. So if you've ever seen a video or a picture of a giraffe getting a drink, do you want to know how they get a drink? They actually have to spread their front legs apart, and then their back legs are together. Their front legs are spread apart, and they dip their head down into the, the stream to get water. Well, they're very vulnerable at that point because they're in an awkward position, and if their prey ever comes, that's when the, the prey will try to hunt them is when, meaning like a lion is looking for them, something to eat. It's when they're getting a drink out of the stream because they're in a really vulnerable position. And then I wanted to tell you one more cool fact that I learned about the uh, giraffes, and that is that when they're in a group, they're called a tower. They're not, I thought that was interesting because they're tall like a tower. And so when they're in a gang, a group of them, they're called a tower. So I hope you enjoyed learning about giraffes today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to draw a giraffe. And I hope you had fun um, trying something new. We did some new tricks today and some new techniques. And the next time we'll be doing the letter A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So I wonder what our animal will be for the letter H. Don't forget to subscribe and invite your friends to take these lessons with Mrs. Torres, and I will see you next time. Bye.